Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabari here. It's been a while since I've done my last movie review, mostly because I've been busy a lot lately with college. But now I finally got spring break this week, so now I get a chance to finally upload some more videos. So let's hope for, for the best. Anyway, this is a review of a film that, sad to say, not many people went to see. It came out on September 21st, 2012. That was based on a comic book from 1977 by John Wagner and Carlos Esquera called Dread. And yes, this is indeed a reboot of a popular comic book that's done right. Because we had the 1995 film with Sylvester Stallone, which sad to say, it wasn't the best adaptation that they had to offer, mostly because of Stallone's performance. But I have to admit, I didn't mind that film, actually. I, I thought it was cool, mostly because you got to see the awesome sets of the Metropolis City called Mega City One. Um, the costumes design that they had, and, and some other characters. Um, yeah, even though they were over the top, you know, they were they were actually pretty cool. Even the robots that they got in, in the film. So I, I didn't mind the, the 1995 version. But this one definitely blows that film out of the water. Mostly from a great performance by Carl Urban, who I think he's definitely an underrated actor. I know he was in films like Doom with uh, Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock. He was also in films like Pathfinder, which I didn't care for, but he's not the problem. It just wasn't a, a particularly great film, as we know. Uh, also, he was in other films like Pandorum, Star Trek, that J.J. Abrams had done, which he was great as uh, Dr. McCoy, a.k.a. Bones. But I swear to God, when I saw his performance in Dread, I think to myself, he could have been the next Batman. Because with that voice that he had in Dread, this would be the perfect Batman. But, nope. They made a mistake when they got uh, Ben Affleck for, for the new Batman vs. Superman. Oh, God. And yes, I saw the movie. And I'm the movie is just so bad that I don't even know if I want to review it. But I already gave my thoughts on that, and I just didn't like it that much. But anyway, um, this movie just looks so beautiful, too, because I think this movie would have looked spectacular if I had seen this in 3D. Because of all the beautiful shots that it got, it definitely feels like you're definitely there. <laughs> it was ultra-violent, too, just like Robocop was in 1987. I mean, it was a movie that, that almost had an X rating, but this movie really did it with justice. And that's exactly how this movie should definitely do. <laughs> because judgment is coming. And yes, he is the law. Anyway, um, this is of course the Blu-ray release um, that actually did very well too. It, it had a great success for its home video run. And it had um, a lot of great special features on the back, as you see. And not only that, but this is also a very rare Blu-ray to actually include the Blu-ray 3D version on one disc. Yeah, and since I don't have a Blu-ray 3D player, which is a shame, because if I had, I would have loved to see how this movie would look in 3D. Yeah, but I'll probably have to wear those 3D glasses that I had to buy, and plus I have to get a 3D TV, too, along with it. But it just looks amazing. I mean, the way this movie was shot. And that's what I'm going to get to once I review this movie today. So let's get to it. It stars Carl Urban, Olivia Furby, who's been best known as playing Juno's friend in Juno, I know she went on to do other films like The Darkest Hour, which was a terrible film, by the way. But nevertheless, she is a beautiful actress. She actually has done some theater arts, too. Interesting. Wood Harris, Linda Hale Day, 
who has been best known for her role in the 1994 adaptation of The Jungle Book, um, which was released by Disney with Jason Scott Lee. Yeah, it was a very underrated adaptation. Yeah, now that we're getting a new film. And um, she was also in the film The Brothers Grimm and the TV show Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles as Sarah Connor. Oh, she did a very great job. She was right up there with Linda Hamilton. Also, uh, Domino Gleason, yeah, the, the guy who would later been best known for for his roles in Ex Machina and uh, Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Uh, he's been in several films, I figure. Yeah. It's written by Alex Garland, who's also been best known for writing screenplays for Twenty Eight Days Later, Sunshine, and once again Ex Machina. And it's directed by P. Travis, who's been best known for directing the film Bandage Point. And if you excuse me, that's not my dog that's barking in the background. It's from outside. Yeah, it's, it's the neighbor's dog. The movie began set in the dystopian wasteland called Curse Earth lies a futuristic metropolis called Mega City One, which is a big city that's overpopulated with 800 million residents and its highest crime rate being 17,000 that also has high-rise mega block buildings in each and every corner filled with small buildings freeway ramps and all these other stores all the way around they even have a drone with a camera that that flies by throughout the entire city targeting all these criminals around and that's where we have the only force in the city are judges, which they act as judge, jury, and executioner. And that's where we meet one man who doesn't take off his helmet and has a deep monotone voice filled with a suit and a badge named Judge Dredd, who's the chief judge officer. He's now working with a female partner who's a, a powerful psychic named Cassandra Anderson, who's played by Olivia Furby. Their job was to go to a 200-story mega-block building called Peach Trees, where they meet a notorious, cold-hearted drug lord and criminal named Madeline Madrigal, also known simply as Mama, with two words. Her plan was to uh, execute free world drug dealers who just created and manufactured a drug where they just use an inhaler called Slow Mo. Where anytime a user uses the inhaler, they somehow reduce the perception of time of 1% of normal speed. And that's where the entire scene is shot in a very spectacular and psychedelic uh, quality that they actually did in this whole beautiful sh scene. I mean, I mean the visual effects were very shiny. It has that rainbow-like effect. It looks like crystals, such as that scene where Mama was in the bathtub, uh, actually waving her arms all the way high, and you can see the bath water actually moving this high and. You see a lot of water actually shooting up throughout the entire screen, looking like crystals. It's just, oh man, it was so beautiful having to see that scene. And yes, they were using all these slow-mo scenes in every single shot in the movie. That was actually done by cinematographer Anthony Dodd Mando, which he actually explains in the interviews in, in the featurettes that he actually used uh, 300 frames yeah, 300 frames per second to shot all these slow-mo scenes with a mix of 3D using all these uh, those 3D cameras that they use in other films that we know today. It's just beautiful because I swear to God, I could have had seen this scene in 3D if I went to go see it in theaters. Because I bet it would have looked just as spectacular as I saw it on Blu-ray in 2D. And, and indeed it would. It would be eye-popping, non-stop visuals all the way around. 
Yeah. It just it's just so beautiful having to watch this. Anyway, they finally enter Peach Trees, where suddenly uh, Mama, along with his um, criminal uh, computer expert, who's played by Domino Gleason, had hired to go inside the security control room. He also has uh, a henchman, too, to join by, uh, named Caleb. Um, anyway, they decided to uh, kill off all the security guards and take over the entire room and actually um, trap both Judge Dredd and Anderson inside the building. Yeah. Because even though they were already in a crime scene where they just killed um, three drug dealers that they just skinned them alive and actually gave them the drug, uh, the slow-mo, and then they threw them off of the balcony 200 feet all the way up high and landed all the way down into the concrete of the lobby. Yeah, they're dropping like flies. I mean, that's what happened in the movie. Even though Judge Dredd, uh, earlier in the film, was having a motorcycle chase uh, with the criminals who were using the drug, and, and they just executed all of them. Plus, they even ran over an innocent victim. Yeah. And that awesome scene where yeah, Dredd actually shot uh, that one guy uh, using that, fl yeah, with that flare bomb that went into his mouth and <laughs> it was burning him completely. I mean, it was, yeah, and exploded too. I mean, wow. I mean, all these scenes are so brutal. But anyway, so Mama, to shut down the entire building and trap them inside, where just when they're about to um, go after the criminal name who's working with Mama, named Kay, who's played by Wood Harris, yeah, because the, they handcuffed him. They're about to go around each and every floor just killing all the criminals one by one. And even though Anderson was using her psychic abilities to figure out what was going on with all these criminals out there and all these other people, because they started seeing all the past crimes in history, I mean, boy, it has an awesome effect of shininess and, and brightness that they have when, when they showed... Uh, her ability to, to actually go inside people's heads. Yeah, we're going to get to that too. You know, playing all these mind games. They, they've been shooting all the criminals. They started getting the a time bomb to check to see all the other criminals inside where they're starting to use the slow-mo inhaler. And when they started using that, that's when the door was blasted open and he held fire in slow motion. Yeah, they're already they're already high on the drug and the <laughs> and you can see a, a scene where they're all getting shot in the stomach and the cheek all this blood started to flow around oh man and it was beautiful because they shot this on CGI and it was a very impressive CGI that they did yeah you know, with the CGI blood and all that in the mix there's also practical effects in the movie too so it, it was really interesting it just looks amazing because I started seeing the the guy's uh, stomach rippled and going um, actually sucking in into it. I mean, wow! It was really amazing. I mean, I can't believe how psychedelic it looked the way they shot it. It was just all shiny too. Even the blood was shiny. So then um, he continues to go on, and then he got K. They're trying to tell him to, to speak up and. And also, they even went inside an abandoned schoolroom just so he could confess. So that's when uh, Anderson started to play mind games uh, with the criminal by actually going inside his head. And that's when <laughs> he started seeing inducing scenes of all of his uh, past crimes that he did. He mentioned he was about to shoot her, but she, but he can't. And yeah, not to mention she was about to take off her clothes and all that, all inside his head. I mean, that was just, <laughs> wow, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, and, and that was in the middle of the scene. But um, as they continue going around, you know, searching and trying to go after all these, these criminals, while they arrived at the 17th floor of the building, 
Mamba and the rest of the game were about to uh, bring in those Vulcan cannons, you know, those those heavy duty machine guns, and they started shooting all the way around, actually killing all these other victims throughout the entire building. That yeah, they even killed the the homeless man uh, with the shopping cart and all his other people around. Oh man, boy, did they they really went into it. And suddenly they escape outside just to get away from them. So Dredd decided to call for backup so then all the other judges can arrive and, and go after those criminals. But it also turns out that Mama decided to come up with her own plan by actually bringing in those corrupt judges to go after them instead. So that's what happened. So it was up to them to actually stop them before a lot of bad things started to happen. And yes, they were trying especially when they're trying to go escape by going into the elevator while those two guys uh, were about to ready to shoot Dredd and Anderson. But <laughs> Dredd, by using his powerful gun, actually uh, asked for the stun gun and, and they stunned both of them. While Kay had escaped with Anderson into the elevator, you know, using her as hostage so that way they can go down to the level where they meet Mama. To, to capture her. While Dredd is already, you know, being surrounded by all these corrupt judges and they're about to attack them one by one with while well, Anderson is just attacking all these other criminals, so that was cool. Even though you know she was running out. It's just to save them. So it's up to them to st once again stop Mama and, and all the criminals and killing all the innocent victims out there. For goodness knows what happens <laughs> and it sure did because um, after seeing this movie I gotta say it was awesome totally badass and it's just sad that I wish I had seen this movie in theaters especially in 3d because it just looks so stunningly amazing the way it was shot in fact, the movie was actually shot at Jonasburg, uh, South Africa, because I could see where some of the city skylines were were faintly familiar. It almost looks a little bit like uh, New York City in the mix of Chicago and Los Angeles, too. But it's really shot in South Africa. It's even done from the UK as well, because it's produced by them. Um, has a wonderful score. It actually has that techno pop feel to it. it. It definitely works, especially when they were doing those slow mo scenes. Uh, I actually heard that during that the scene at the end, or any other scene, they actually use, um, believe it or not, uh, the composer named uh, Paul Leonard Morgan actually created a song that was actually based on, and I hate to mention his name but I might as well anyway, a Justin Bieber song. Like they just slowed down the entire beat and made it into an 800% slowed down music that just sounds so beautiful. The way they, the way it sounds. I mean, it works so well when it did those uh, slow motion shots uh, after they took the drug and oh man, it just works so much, and I'm glad they did that. But, and also all the other beats that they used was just, it was just badass right there. I mean, it's probably a lot better than the score they used by Anna Silvestri in, in the original 1995 film. Yeah, which is, which it was okay, but it's just, it gets, it just makes this movie look a lot better as it is, because it's supposed to be, you know, set in the world. Uh, the cast, I mean, let's face it, Cal Urban is, is as underrated as, as he can get. He was a total badass in that role. You know, he, he didn't create a bad performance whatsoever. In fact, I love all the catchphrases that he had in the film that definitely works, where he says, I am the law. And he also says, Judgment is here. Wow. I love that. Olivia Furby, very hot and sexy and, and very beautiful too. 
as a psychic mutant named Anderson. Oh man, I had to say. <laughs> I can't say I don't blame everybody for those who've seen that scene uh, with the with her playing mind games on the criminal. Um, they also have a hot chick, of course, who is indeed cold-hearted, uh, named, um, named Mama, who's played by Lena Headley. I mean, let's face it, th this had to be one of her greatest performances to play a villain. You know, she's, um, she, she is very tough on nails, but she's also very quiet at times, and she's not annoying either, so that's a good thing. <laughs> I, I like that. I mean, she can definitely play the role exactly like all these other tough girls can do. And, it, and somehow you do feel sorry for the character because of the way she was back then. Uh, if, if you actually watch the comic book prequel featured on the Blu-ray, you'll see exactly her background story. Her face is all carved up um, with a knife. Yeah, you can see that, that line that she had on her cheekbone. You could tell how intense she really is, and it shows. Wow. I mean, this is one powerful building. Domino Gleason, as the uh, computer expert, he's okay. I mean, he does look a little bit like a mix between Macaulay Cogan and uh, Danny Temerelli, and, you know, when he was all grown up, you know, not <laughs> overweight and stuff. Or maybe look a little bit like Barry Pepper there. Yeah, I, I think he looked a little bit like him, too in the mix, but he's just a young guy you know, who just didn't want to do this. You can even tell. I mean, he was even frightening too because <laughs> he didn't want to get killed by Mama and the criminals or even get killed by Dredd and, and uh, Anderson as well. So at least Anderson helped out. Yeah. Oh. But the effects in the movie were just spectacular. I mean, they used a lot of visual effects. They did use practical effects too, which I, I just mentioned. It was just, it had a mix of it. And once again, with the slow-mo effects uh, that they used when they, whenever they inhaled the drug, it just moves at a very slow pace. It just works so well. It just, with the beautiful music in, the, in there, it's just, oh man. I just love this movie so much. And I, I can't believe this movie only made $41.5 million at the box office out of its $45 million budget. That's a shame. It should have been at number one at the box office, and I can see why. Um, already, uh, mostly because, not, not only because of the marketing and all this other stuff, but I was even more upset to find out that this movie opened at number 6 at the box office that weekend with End of Watch being at number 1, which that was a good movie by the way, End of Watch with um, Jake Gyllenhaal and it was directed by David Ayer. But then they, we have films like House at the End of the Street with Jennifer Lawrence. Um, that was a pretty bad horror film, sad to say, I mean, because she's better than this. And then there's that awful Trouble with the Curve, even though it stars all my favorite actors, Amy Adams, Clint Eastwood, and John Goodman, but it had that stupid idiot Justin Timberlake in the movie. It just makes me sick because it could have been a good comedy about an old man who, who once had a, a big curve that he, that he threw back then when he was... Uh, very young, but he no longer has that because, well, he is old and retired, and and he's trying to practice, you know, going back to the game. Uh, but the film was just stupid. It was done by some director I never even heard of, and and it just shows that he can't do it. <laughs> it was actually one of the worst movies I've ever saw. I put it at my number two back then. Uh, the screenplay done by Alex Garland. I swear to God, he did a very good job writing the, the source material. It definitely stays true to it. I mean, I could tell because he's indeed a comic book fan. I love that. And it shows. He definitely did a good job. And, and the fact that he also produced this movie too. For 95 minutes, it was worth it.
And yes, they just recently had a six-part uh, mini-series uh, of an animated series called uh, Dread Super Fiend, which is available on YouTube, by the way, so you can watch that. And, well, I think this was as close as we can get to have a sequel. And you know what? Let's hope someday in the future we do get a sequel to this movie. I mean, I know it's been so long these days, and they tried so hard to do this by signing up all these petitions and all of that just so we could finally get a sequel we really deserve. But who knows? Maybe we might. I mean, it did make its money for, for all these uh, home video sales. So who knows how that's going to turn out, but we'll see. I mean, sometimes petitions don't work, but if it takes some time, I think it, they might be able to make one. And this time, it'll be better marketed than this movie. And hopefully we get to see more of the other characters that we need, and hopefully we get to see a character named Judge Death. Because that's what we want to see in the entire trilogy of Dread, And it'll stay justice to the entire comic book because that's what we want and that's what we want to get so anyway that's Dread and I give that film five stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye